Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. We're going to be looking at the monthly average return on investment, or ROI, over various time frames. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, the monthly average return on investment, we must first define what we're talking about. So basically the idea is you pick a month and you say, all right, well, if you bought Bitcoin on any day during that month, what was your ROI 90 days later, historically speaking, averaged over all these years, right? So let's just pick July. It would say, okay, well, on average from going back all the way to 2010, what would have been your 90 day ROI buying every day in July? So it, if you bought on July 1st and it looks 90 days ahead um, and says, okay, that was what the return would have been. If you bought on July 2nd, same, you know, and, and we just keep going 90 days from that time point and then averages all of those days from that month, looking out 90 days to give you an idea of in general, when has been the best time to buy Bitcoin based on say a 90 day return on investment. Note that any given year, of course, anything can happen. We also do know that Bitcoin is fairly cyclical, and so perhaps it is worthwhile to continue to look at this stuff. Now, on average, the worst month for buying Bitcoin with a 90-day ROI time frame in mind is June. Now, it still averages out to be positive. In fact, on average, every month is positive in terms of a 90-day ROI. June comes in at 1.086. July is 1.131. But you can see that on average, the 90-day return buying in June and July tends to be the worst for Bitcoin. Now, that's not to say that Bitcoin can't go up in June. Uh, it's not to say that it can't go up in July. We know that it can. In fact, Bitcoin did go up in June. But when you think about it, what we're looking at right now is the 90-day return not the 30-day return or the 60-day return. We're looking at the 90-day return. And the 90-day return for buying in June would be sometime out in September. Now, normally, as we know, September for Bitcoin is one of the worst months, right? Negative 7% on average with a large standard deviation of almost 13%. But if you think about it, that's why buying in June tends to not provide the best 90-day returns because if you were looking to flip it, you know, flip the trade in 90 days, historically that would be sometime in September. September normally brings lower prices, not higher prices. So I think that's one of the reasons why June and July provide the lowest 90 day return on investment. As you get later into the year, it tends to be a bit better, right? So buying in October on average has led to a 1.89X over the next 90 days. Um, buying in in January and, and February, 1.8 or so. Buying in March, when you average out from 2010, tends to do the best. Now, one issue with this is that when you average out from 2010, it's going to include some months that just gave astronomical returns, right? Like if you were to go look at monthly returns back in 2009, and 2000, or sorry, 2010 here, I mean, you had some months, right, that gave 220%, I mean, this was 221%. Here's a July or an April, it gave 418%. So it makes it difficult sometimes when you're looking at monthly moves that were like that in terms of trying to get a, a, a decent signal out of this. Okay, because I mean, you can also flip this over to say like a one year ROI and see when has historically been the best time. But I would say, why not exclude some of the first couple of years? just so we get past some of those monthly moves where Bitcoin went up like several hundred percent, right? Because that doesn't really happen anymore. Uh, I'm not saying that it can't happen, but it's not nearly as likely for Bitcoin to go up 300% today in a single month uh, than it was a long time ago. It would be a very low probability event. So if you were to exclude 2010 and maybe 2011 and just start in 2012, you still get something that shows that June and July provide the worst 90-day returns. If you go to 2013, you still see it, right? And this is basically including data from 2013 onward, not just 2013, 2013 to the present day. 
if you started in 2014, you can still see that June, June is the lowest, then January, and then July. But it's interesting how the summer months, especially June, tends to provide the worst 90-day ROI. Again, it's not to say that Bitcoin can't go up as it did. It's just that if you're looking for it for, say, a three-month move, it tends to not work out like you want, you might expect, right? Like sometimes a move goes, sometimes Bitcoin goes up, but then normally by, you know, August, September, it starts to trend back down. So just something, something to think about. Now, if we look at this from, say, 2014, and we look at a one-year ROI, you can see that on average, the best time, uh, you know, the 90-day, the, the, the or sorry, the, yeah, the 365-day ROI tends to be the best in December. Now, you could be playing with fire because, you know, oftentimes uh, Bitcoin has seen major peaks around that time frame, November, December. But I guess the thing is, is had you bought the year before, then your average one-year return before, you know, the parabolic rally year would have been quite good. So hopefully, you know, hopefully that makes sense. You can also look at, at what provides, say, the best, um, you know, half-year ROI. And in this case, averaged out from 2014 to, uh, to, to the present day, June and July are actually some of the best times. Why is that? Well, in this case, if you're looking over a six-month window, normally you're looking to then sell at the end of the year. And from a seasonality perspective, we know that Bitcoin sells some major tops at the end of 2013 and into 2017 and the end of 2021. And we also saw a pretty nice parabolic rally even at the end of 2020. Um, and, and even late 2016 going into early 2017. So that is why if it's a six-month time frame, then June and July tends to be better. If it's a three-month time frame, then June and July is not as good because then you're looking to sell it around September. So a lot of times when you think about investing in crypto and people say, well, is it a good investment or not? I mean, a lot of times it just depends on what your time frame is. If it's, if it's a week, no one really knows. Um, if it's three months, then you, you, you know, oftentimes it is at least worthwhile to consider some of the seasonality for it, especially considering that September timeframe tends to not be a great month for Bitcoin, um, and, and, and so on and so forth. Right. So I think it's, it, it's worthwhile to think about it in that light, just so you go in with the you know appropriate expectations, right? Like if you're YOLOing into Bitcoin in June with the expe expectation you're going to flip it three months later, that tends to be the worst time to do it, right? June to September. You can oftentimes find much better time frames to make, say, like a 90-day trade if history is any indication. Remember, this stuff doesn't have to play out every single time. But, you know, every single time we go into September and we say, well, it, it tends to be red. It doesn't have to be, but it tends to be. And then, you know, for, for years and years and years, it just has been red. Six months in a row have been red. Maybe we'll be on lucky number seven uh, once we get to this September. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But anyways, um, if you if you look at this average, say just for the last last cycle to now, um, or maybe let's say 2019 to, to 2023, you'll still see that the 90 day ROI in June tends to not be that great. It's the lowest month. Okay, a one year ROI best month has been March since 2019. Worst month, June and July, June and July. So one of, that's one of the reasons why, you know, we talked about a little bit yesterday or, or sometime recently about the year to date ROI for Bitcoin. I've talked about this a lot, right? Going into the, the pre-having year, normally in the pre-having year, you do see it turn back around sometime halfway through the year. Okay. And that's why that 90 day ROI buying in June and July doesn't tend to work out that well. Now, it doesn't mean that it can't go off in the short term. I mean, I've said before, right? It could, you know, you could see Bitcoin pop up higher. If anything, it would be a welcome move to get the dominance of Bitcoin higher, which I still think needs to go higher, but I think it's going to go higher regardless of whether Bitcoin goes up or down. So it's somewhat of a moot point. But if it does go, if Bitcoin USD does go up, it's just more bad news for the altcoins. I mean, you know, in the short term, they might go up on their USD pairs because Bitcoin will drag them up. But what happens when Bitcoin rolls over? You know, at some point it's going to happen. And, and when it happens, 
that's when you that's when you see those altcoins go down even further on their Bitcoin pairs, at least for, for the first couple of months or so, based on what we've seen historically. So this is why we talk about this seasonality stuff is is because we've seen these types of moves before. We know how seasonality tends to play out with Bitcoin as you get closer to that September time frame. And we are starting to approach it. I would say, I mean, right now it, it is still possible for Bitcoin, you know, to make a, a another move. Um, but it, it hasn't happened yet. And I mean, the, the clock is ticking, right? I mean, some sometimes people talk about, you know, price predictions a lot and 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 where, you know, where is the price going to go? I think one thing that might be better to think about is just time frames, right? Like, you know, the price can trend higher until a certain time frame. And whatever the price is by that time frame is probably only that, you know, that's probably what it's going to achieve, right? So like even in 2013, 2017 and 2021, of course, it's impossible to predict the exact price, but it's just say, well, once you get to Q4 of those years, uh, whatever the price is, normally we start to turn things back around. Just like in the pre-having year, it's like, it's hard to know where exactly Bitcoin is going to find its local top. So it's really hard to know how much that altcoin liquidity is out there and can be sucked up by Bitcoin, which is still what I think is happening. It's hard to know exactly how far that'll take us. But normally, it starts to roll over in June, July, right? Sometime in that time frame, June or July. And, and that is also what this chart is saying in terms of the 90-day ROI. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. See you guys next time. Bye.